Hey there, welcome to the Electronics channel. Darlington transistors are transistors like this one, where you essentially have two transistors cascaded together. And now these two transistors have their collectors connected together, and the emitter from the first transistor is connected to the base of the second transistor. Now these are typically packaged as one IC, so you get a you get one IC that has a base a collector and an emitter, just like a regular NPN transistor here, base collector and emitter. The difference is internally, there are actually two transistors cascaded together. Now, if you are looking at a three terminal transistor like this one, unless you know the part number, which I've obscured in this picture, you don't know whether this is a Darlington transistor or a regular BJT. So in this video, I wanna show you the features of a Darlington transistor or what you get when you cascade the two NPNs or they could be PNPs as well when you cascade those two transistors together. To understand the effect of having these two transistors cascaded together like this, let's an analyze what is going on in the transistor. So I'm going to label a few things on this transistor. Call that IC. Call this current here IC1. I will call this current here IC2. I'll call this current IB or IB1. I call this current here IE1. Call this current here IB2. And one thing you should notice is that IE1 and IB2 are the same current. And then finally, I'll call this current IE or IE2. Okay, this transistor here has a beta value, it's called S beta one, and this transistor has a beta value of beta two. All right, so IC comes into the collector and then splits, some of it goes to the first transistor, some of it goes to the second transistor. And if I write this in terms of beta, this is beta one times IB one plus beta two times IB two. Now remember IB2, which is over here, is the same as IE1, so I can rewrite this as beta1 IB1 plus beta2 IE1. And if I expand IE1 out to IB plus IC1, this is beta1 IB1, which is the same as IB, I've labeled it IB over here, plus beta 2 times IB1 plus IC1. And if I expand out IC1 to be beta 1 IB1, I get beta 1 IB1 plus beta 2 times IB1 plus beta 1 IB1. And I have an IB1 term in all of the terms in this expression. So I can factor that out and I get IB1 times beta1 plus beta2 plus beta1 beta2. Now if both of these transistors are manufactured on the same IC, I can manufacture in such a way that I can get the betas to be basically the same. So if, if beta1 is equal to beta2, and if I just call that beta, then IC will be equal to 2 beta plus beta squared all times IB1. And generally this beta is fairly large. Like if you think of that as, a, as say around 100, then this term would be 200 and this term would be 10,000. So this term is going to be much smaller than beta squared. So what I could say then is IC is approximately equal to beta squared IB, or I can say the beta D, where the, this, this is the, the beta of a, the Darlington transistor, times IB. So this Darlington transistor beta is going to be much bigger than the beta of a single NPN transistor. Now one common application of Darlington transistors is their use as a switch. So let's look at this example and get an understanding of why you would use a Darlington as a switch as opposed to just an NPN transistor. So in this particular situation, we have 
a 3.3 volt microcontroller. So it outputs 3.3 volts on its output. It, it's able to output 3.3 volts on its output pins. And it's only able to drive 20 milliamps on each one of those pins. So you know, common, common kind of limitation for a, a low voltage, low power microcontroller. And I want to be able to control a load that draws five amps from this microcontroller so I can use a solid state switch at this point. Now, what if I was to use just an NPN transistor with a beta and a typical range of, let's say, 150? So I want to run this switch in, in saturation when it's turned on. So my IC sat that I require, or the saturation current, I want to run it in saturation, so my IC saturation current is equal to 5 amps. In order for this circuit to act as a good switch, I require that my base current be more than 5 times IC sat over beta. And the reason for this is I want to make sure that I'm in saturation when I drive out my, my base current. So this 5 times IC sat over beta, well if we're dealing with a NP, regular NPN transistor that we figured has a beta of about 150, this value, this is going to be equal to 25 amps over beta, which is equal to about 167 milliamps. But I know on my microcontroller, I'm limited, I'm limited to 20 milliamps. So I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to have this switch operating in the saturation region. So this is not acting as a good switch. So now let's look at what value of beta I need to make this inequality hold true. Well, for my IB, I need that to be 20 milliamps. So that's the maximum my IB can be. And that needs to be greater than or equal to 25 amps, that's 5 times IC sat, divided by beta. And that means if I re rearrange this equation, that, needs my, that means my beta needs to be greater than or equal to 25 amps over 20 milliamps, which is 1250. So I need a beta that's more than, or at least equal to 1250. So really, this is a large beta compared to a single NPN transistor. And we can get this size of beta with a Darlington transistor. And if I have my beta even bigger, I found, I found some Darlington transistors with a beta of around 7,000. So that means I could use a larger IB than I would to, if I wanted to drive out 20 milliamps. So I can actually have, I don't have to drive my output current at its maximum. I can drive it at, at, at considerably less than 20 milliamps and, and choose my RB appropriately. And basically, how would I do that? Well, let's say I do have this beta that's equal to 7,000, and I decide that I want to set my IB to be 5 milliamps, so like a quarter of the maximum. And now all I need to do is figure out what value of RB do I need to give me this IB of 5 milliamps. Well, to get that 5 milliamps, I'm going to have 3.3 volts minus the voltage at the base. And the voltage at the base, remember, I'm actually going through two base emitter junctions. So those two base emitter junctions are going to give me about 1.4 volts, maybe 1.2 volts, but let's, let's use 1.4 volts here. So I'll have 3.3 minus 1.4 volts over RB. So that means my RB needs to be 380 ohms. One thing I should check is my IB value of 5 milliamps is that sufficient to push my transistor into saturation? Well, I want to check against this inequality. So is 5 milliamps greater than or equal to 25 over 7,000? And this works out to about 3.6 milliamps. So yes, this check is true. So I dropped my IB down to 5 milliamps. What's the lowest I could drop it down to? Well, the lowest I could drop it down to is about 3.6 milliamps and still ensure that my switch my Darlington transistor that's acting as a switch is operating in the saturation region. Okay, in this video, you got a little bit of an introduction into what Darlington transistors are and saw one of the applications of Darlington transistors operating as a switch. So I hope that helps you out in your investigation of how Darlington transistors work. And thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.